put a half a cup in and that helps to bind it together. Mm -hmm. But then I am also going to dredge it in some there like that just before frying. Let me cut these in now. Yeah, about medium, medium high heat, okay. heat on this. And we're ready? And then, yeah, in they go. And you can see how these are just really holding together. Mm -hmm. Just like a burger. They just. And that's where it holds it together even through Yeah, see how nice yeah. it's holding together? And it creates a nice crust down there having the panko on the outside. The crust has got a lot of taste in it. Oh, yeah. I love it when it's yeah. crunchy. Yeah. It's that brownness. Yep, yep. Part of what makes it all great. One more. We'll get rid of that. All right. Okay, and now we, while those are cooking, we need to whip up the tarragon. Okay. So, this is an awesome sauce that you can actually make ahead of time. Because it actually gets a little bit better as it sets. Please. But those are, that's actually garnish for okay. later. I need a uh, spatula is what I need. Okay. Dig this stuff out of here. So, we have a cup of sour cream. I didn't say that was healthy. You but could use non fat sour cream. You could use non fat, yeah. Or even light, you know, just to right. reduce a little bit. And then mayonnaise. Again, and you can use the little fat. Yep. Actually, this is a little fat. So there we go. And onion. Oh, boy. And it's one of the great things about uh, food processors because they do all the work for you. You have to chop it in. Yeah. They yeah. just toss it in. I do give the um, chives a little bit of a snip because sometimes they get right. wrapped around the blade. Yeah. They, yeah, they can, do. They can kind of have that problem sometimes. So let's see. we got to get a bit of salt and some pepper in there. Oh, yeah. Um, and that's kind of a pit taste sort of thing. If you wanted to do a little chili pepper, you could. Ooh, okay. And then there it is. <laughs> you could, if you want to add a little more heat. I love heat in the kitchen. Okay, and then we have a couple teaspoons of Dijon mustard. I love Dijon. All right. Mm -hmm. And this. And then, of course, the parsley. Brought my little base right from my refrigerator. Right. Put it in there and cover it with a classic produce bag, mm -hmm. and it's just great. It it a lot of herbs, isn't it? Yeah. Rarely do I throw my herbs away when I do that. So we need about a cup of that in there, and then it's ready to go again. This is why you need more than one. Yeah. More than one bowl. Yeah. More than one bowl. Yeah. Or, or you could make it the day before, and then it has a chance to go to the dishwasher and come out. Is it, would it be a good idea to let it sit for a day? Oh, oh yeah. The top, yeah, the cherry on top, the flavors will just get that much better. And this sauce can be used as dip. I've used it in potato salad before. Oh, I think that's great. And oh, uh, that's with salmon, it's awesome with salmon. The same exact recipe is incredible to use salmon with it also. And you could use any kind of firm white fish, but halibut and sword stuff. Okay, so what do okay, we do now? Okay, so here is our sauce, and we're ready to add it to it. Good stuff, George. Okay. There we go. We will prevail. And I guess um, we can just pour some right in here. It makes a great dip for oh. crackers and vegetables. Oh. And great way you know, to squeeze. If you had some left over, that would make a great dip for watching a football game. Absolutely. It's a great tip dip. Yeah. Yep. It's um, really... And isn't that, they're just gorgeous to look at like that. <laughs> That's beautiful. Now, are they done? Are they cooking that long? It's going to be like a... Uh, it's about, about four minutes on each side. Oh, it really, really does not take um, that long. Um, so, George, are you going to try this? I sure have. have to try it with some of this. Now, you have to get some of my it other... Like red stuff? Yeah, the, the red stuff here is actually um, oven roasted tomatoes. It's another awesome recipe, which is in the cookbook. So you, Ooh, um, those are beautiful. it just they makes are. an incredible garnish, and so it looks, I better put one on there for each of you, right? Exactly. I don't, I don't want any fighting. You don't want any. I don't know. I have lots of brothers and sisters. I can and lots of fighting. The oven roasted right. tomatoes, that, I'm so glad that's going to be in the cookbook as well, because you can get miles out of that recipe. And it's a thing to do. Very versatile. And when they have extra tomatoes. Yeah, and, and it can be mm. 
Or if you only want to make this, that would be just fine. For <laughs> really. That is delicious. But call us good. before you delicious. make this because we're going to want to come to dinner. This is great. It is absolutely. Please, please get the recipes. You'll, you'll enjoy them. There's over 500 in the book. Uh, you'll never be able to do all the recipes. You won't. But boy, will you have fun trying. Give us a call, please, at, uh, let's see, 1-800-443-1999. Talk to our wonderful volunteers. They're doing a great job for us, and they'll do a great job for you getting you this uh, recipe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And in your family. Call us. Thank you. That's wonderful. Boy, Kim Berto of Paul's still making a wonderful halibut patty with the tarragon sauce. You know, really what a great economical and delicious way to use halibut. I mean, the, the aroma of everything is heavenly. You really couldn't resist if you're here, and I hope we can persuade you to call in today. 1-800-443-1999. Get your very own copy of our brand new cookbook, KCTS 9, Cooks for the Holidays, our biggest and best cookbook yet in years with a donation of $65 to KCTS Television, hopefully your public fa favorite public television station, and ours. It's a great way to invest in the programs you see every day here on public television, whether you're into news, science, drama, British comedy. It's all here for you, and we're here for you every day. 1-800-443-1999. Give one of our wonderful volunteers a call, or go online at kcts9.org to make your pledge. At $65, this is a huge cookbook, almost 600 recipes, and you have a choice of the $65 donation level, either the cookbook or the DVD of the show. Each cooks on a separate chapter of the DVD, and the DVD comes back as a CD that contains all the recipes from the cookbook, the new one, the holidays cookbook, plus our 1996 show cookbook, Holiday Desserts. All the recipes are there, packed onto that tiny CD. I don't know how they do it, but boy, what a treasure that's going to be for you. Well, and at the $100 level, you can get both. Uh, that's my favorite investment in public television. Uh, you can keep whichever version you like and uh, give the other ones to a friend who loves to cook. And if you love to cook, I bet you know lots of people who also love to adventure in the kitchen. 1-800-443-1999. Join us now, won't you? I heard that. Uh -huh. I managed to get to the, the to the Space Needle folks and Chef Jeff, Jeff Maxfield, who is the uh, the chef at the, the Space Needle, Sky City at the Space Needle. He fixed us a pecan crusted goat cheese followed by a seared wild chinook salmon. And with that view on a beautiful sunny day and that quality of food, it was a treat indeed. It sounds fantastic. It was. Let's go. Enjoy. <laughs> kitchen area of Sky City at the Space Needle with Executive Chef Jeff Maxfield and Jeff is going to give us some wonderful ideas for a really fun, uh, a different holiday treat and it's going to be salmon. Salmon it is. And, and what are we going to do first? Uh, we're actually going to do a pecan crusted goat cheese as an appetizer to start off this this menu uh, with a little mountain huckleberry uh, reduction. Okay, let's get cooking here and see what we do first. This is a stainless steel pan. Mm -hmm. We're going to get the pan hot a little bit here and uh, we're going to start with a little bit of sugar. And we're pretty much making a caramel, is what this is. So we'll start with a little bit of water. Just enough to moisten the sugar a little bit. Mm -hmm. We want to dissolve the sugar. And then we'll put in a lemon juice. You know, there's a chemical reaction that happens with the lemon. And, and what it does is it keeps it keeps the sugar from crystallizing. So anybody that's made caramel at home and has had the sugar just turn into one solid lump yeah. in the pan, uh, you know, has been frustrated. It makes it easier to clean up as well. So that's a very good half a lemon gets out of that bubble book. Absolutely. So I'll put a little bit more sugar in here. Okay. So as it starts to dissolve, what we're going to do is wait for a caramel stage. And I try to kind of keep it down off the side of the pan. And what that does is just keep it from burning. Oh, that looks looking so good. All right. So as we're starting to get brown here, we want to go just a 
that nice caramel, you know, like what you put over an ice cream, that color of yeah. caramel that you put over ice cream. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit, and we're going to add the vinegar. Okay. And the vinegar is going to just stop the cooking a little bit. It'll bubble up, and it almost turns into a crack there. You see how yeah, kind of is? Yeah. If there's some chunks there, that'll dissolve. Okay, and we're going to add a little bit of our red wine. We're already taking the torque out of it. Now, Jeff, obviously, if you've done this often, you don't measure, but uh, will our people be able to know when they use this recipe how much to put in, at least from the beginning? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we've got about a cup, uh, it's about a cup of sugar, uh, juice of half of a lemon, just enough water. There's water, really, just enough to soften the sugar and to, to uh, dissolve the sugar. Uh, and then it's three cups of uh, red wine. And what we're going to do is we're going to reduce that all the way down until it's dry. And this is one shallot. And this just gives it a nice kind of savory onion flavor. So the star anise. Uh, and we're going to put one of these in. Now you don't break those or anything. I don't break it. I like it just a, a very mild flavor. I don't, you know, I'm a, a big licorice fan, but too much is too much. Too, too, much. too much. So the huckleberries, this is the juice that comes out of them. So we're going to just dump all that in. Huckleberries going to be pretty popular again, too. Absolutely. Yeah, we, you know, the Northwest is a great region for, for huckleberries, you know, I think the state of Idaho, that's their, uh, um, I want to say it's their, uh, kind of goes along state. with their potatoes, huh? Plant. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. So this sauce here is pretty much done. Um, you can always add just a little pinch of salt and that, you know, gives us a little more savoriness to it. Okay. And uh, we'll just let that reduce. Once it's done, we can, if it needs a little bit more salt, we can always add it then. As that reduces, we're going to do uh, our breading for uh, okay. the goat cheese. We've got uh, two ingredients here. Uh, one is pecans. You can substitute any of your favorite nuts. Okay. Um, these are uh, just toasted and chopped. We, we're, for our purpose, we actually chop them a little bit finer. So just after they're toasted, let them cool off to where you can touch them. Mm -hmm. And then just rough, rough cut them with a knife. And we've actually got a, a mixture that's already done here Okay. Uh, that has two to one. Uh, it's pecans and panko, which is a Japanese breadcrumb. I've got a little bowl here uh, that we're going to crack our eggs into, and uh, this is going to be kind of act as a glue for everything to stick to it. Okay. And we'll just beat the eggs. Okay. So I've got goat cheese here, which is just a uh, this is a, a softened goat cheese. It comes in a nice little log shape, so it's real easy for us to cut it mm -hmm. into discs. Um, so we cut it just into a disc there. Three quarters of an inch thick. I mean, it, it, this is enough to share between two or three people. So we'll season with a little bit of salt and pepper. And we're going to go directly into the flour. Oh, okay. One of the tricks, too, is to have one wet hand and one dry hand so that you yep. don't have glue on both hands. Into the, the egg. Into the egg. Okay. Coat it real nice. And then we'll go into the breadcrumb mixture. So we'll go back into the egg mixture. And then again into the breadcrumb. So you want to get the, the oil right around uh, 300 degrees. You're pretty much looking for it to make some noise. With our uh, our sauce here, what we do is we just make a nice little pile here in the center of the plate. And you can drag it if you want to. And just kind of want to move that goat cheese around a little bit. You don't want to let it sit in one spot. What we serve it with is a little salad. Uh, made up of a uh, little bit of wild arugula, and then we mix it with a little bit of basil. So just pull up the basil leaves. Um, two to one, usually I, I put a little bit more uh, arugula than basil. Okay. okay. And we'll put a little bit of black pepper on there, a little bit of salt, and some of this olive oil, just drizzle that on there just to give it a little bit of a, oh, of a nice sheen. So you've got a good little salad going on there. Mm -hmm. And our goat cheese should be just about done. So when I remove it, what I'll do is I'll remove it right into a towel to kind of take that extra sure. extra oil off of it. And you just pop that right there down in the in the nice puddle of the huckleberry there. A little salad here. It looks delicious, but look at the colors too for a, a, a beautiful oh. presentation on your table. These are Christine's. And there you have it. We'll put a little bit of the rest of the salad. Why not? 
It is crusty. And you it's crusty. It. Yeah. There you okay. are. And right on a Christine here, George. There we go. Okay. Hmm. That's fantastic. The huckleberry has a perfect taste with it. Nice little sweet sourness mm -hmm. to it. Mm -hmm. You're going to get a lot of compliments off this one, folks. You really are. It's beautiful. And beautiful presentation and wonderful taste. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank you.